After building the set of dining chairs, I needed to build a matching trestle table for my client. I knew I wanted to incorporate accent details such as walnut plugs and pillowed wedged mortise and tenons. I also wanted to incorporate some gentle curves to the dining table that are seen throughout the dining chairs. And while I did not incorporate aspects of cloud lifts in the table design, I wanted those subtleties to translate well to the dining table itself. This is how I went about building a matching dining table to complete this set. I started with 12 quarter stock for the foot of the trestle table and 8 quarter stock for the leg post and top brace of the trestle table. I like to mill and dimension lumber as I need it, or else I risk having to re-dimension lumber if it sits in my shop for too long before machining joinery. You can check out the link to my lumber milling video in the upper right corner where I explain the process and logic I go through to mill lumber in my shop. Once the pieces for the leg assembly are milled to final thickness, I cross cut them to final length on the miter saw. The fence system I built for my miter saw is made of aluminum extrusions and you can click on the link to that video explaining all the parts and pieces that I use to make the miter saw fence in the upper right hand corner as well. I'm using my panta router to machine all of the mortise and tenon joinery, so I mark the center line of the joints on all of the pieces. Once the machine is set up, all I need to do is line up the center line of the foot blank to the center line of the machine table. I then use the self-centering guides on the template holder to center the mortise vertically on the workpiece. I'm using a monster 1 inch diameter router bit to cut the mortises. I lock it into place and then slowly advance the bit, taking light passes. Once that's complete, I readjust the height of the template holder, switch out the template follower and router bit, and machine the matching tenon on the post. A few taps with the mallet and I've got a nice friction fitting joint that will be reinforced with walnut dowels. Next, I'll join the leg post to the top brace with 1 inch thick double mortise and tenons. I line up the templates on the template holder, adjust the height of the fence, line up the center line of the top brace, clamp it down, and go to town. I machine one mortise, switch to the adjacent template, and machine the second mortise. To machine the 1 inch thick double tenons in the post, I had to switch out to a half inch router bit and a 22 millimeter diameter follower. This time I used the self centering fence on the machine table to align the leg post. I locked down the workpiece, and just like before, I slowly advanced the bit and nibble away at the tenon. I know it looks really chunky right now, but I won't be able to start shaping these pieces until I finally attach the stretcher. The stretcher will be joined to the leg assembly with a 1 inch thick by 5 inch long through mortise and tenon. I used a shop made fixture to hold the leg post to the machine. This allowed me to tilt the table to the vertical position. To make the custom size 5 inch long tenon template, I cut the rounded end of a 2 inch and 3 inch tenon template and combined them on the template holder. Max Sheldon from Panto Router experimented with this method of making custom sized templates and it worked flawlessly for him. So I adopted it on the stretcher and leg posts. And as you can see, a clean, seamless, 5 inch long mortise. After milling the stretcher, I cross cut it to final length on the miter saw. I also used a marking gauge to scribe the shoulder on the tenon. The final shape of the stretcher will be an arc, so I removed a chunk of the tenon shoulder with a back saw so there'd be less material removal on the panta router. With proper workpiece support, I clamped the stretcher to the table and machined the 1 inch thick tenon. Now as you can see with the dry fit, the through tenon is about an eighth of an inch proud of the leg post. I'll be wedging and pillowing the through tenon similar to the through tenons on the dining chairs that I built. So that completes the joinery, now it's time for shaping. A trestle table leg assembly is essentially an I-beam. Its minimalistic design prevents the top from sagging, and the leg assemblies are tied together to prevent the tabletop from racking. I wanted to celebrate this engineering marvel by stripping away all the unnecessary material and softening the look by creating sweeping curves with rounded edges.
Using a drawing bow, I sketched out the shapes in full scale on half inch plywood. I roughed them out on the bandsaw and cut a 45 degree angle at the ends of the plywood templates at the miter saw. At the bench, I smoothed everything out with a curved bottom spoke shape. From the templates, I made a pattern routing jig by attaching clamping blocks to another piece of plywood and then double stick taped the templates to the jig form. The shape is roughed out on the bandsaw and then flush trimmed at the router table. Finally, I attach a couple of toggle clamps which will hold the workpiece while at the router table. From there, I'll trace out the template onto my work pieces and rough out all of my pieces on the bandsaw, making sure to leave just a little bit of the line to flush trim. I first cut out the top brace and foot, and then cut out the leg post. Each piece gets clamped into its respective jig and then flush trimmed. If you notice, the pattern routing jigs only machine one half of the work piece. Two reasons for that. I can just flip the piece on the jig and that ensures both halves are exactly the same. I'm also aiming to make downhill cuts going with the grain to prevent the bit from tearing out chunks of wood. I also try to avoid routing end grain for this exact reason and that's why I cut the 45 degree angle on the top brace and foot at the miter saw. I still have more shaping to do on the leg assembly but now I'll focus on the stretcher. As I said earlier the stretcher tenon is going to be wedged and pillowed. To add a round over to the tenon, I'm doing this horizontally on the pantry router. The stretcher is much too big to hold vertically on the router table and using a handheld router doesn't offer much support. A light sanding gets the tenon to final shape until it needs to be wedged. The arc for the stretcher was sketched on half inch plywood using a drawing bow. And much like all of my other templates, I roughed it out on the bandsaw and fared the curve at the bench with a spoke shape and sanding block. Once I'm happy with the arc, I traced it out on the stretcher and roughed it out on the bandsaw. Since the stretcher is larger than the other leg assembly pieces, I double stick taped the template to the stretcher as a pattern routing template. I didn't feel as though I needed a special jig to hold the work piece. Again, I'm trying to avoid uphill cuts going against the grain. So I'll route half of the work piece using the top bearing of my pattern routing bit. I'll then flip the work piece over with the template facing the top of the router table and raise the router bit so the bottom bearing now engages the template. And here's the dry fit of the base assembly. Still a lot to do, but the macro shaping of the leg assembly is complete. I was fortunate enough to find several 12 inch wide boards to make up the tabletop. I first cleaned up the edges on the bandsaw to eliminate the rough mill marks. And if you look closely, you can see these boards have a little bit of a twist to them. I reduced this twist by planing down the high spots at each of the corners with a hand plane. This makes the flattening process on my joiner much more efficient. I then plane down the boards to a thickness of one and a quarter inches and then joint the edges for a glue ready edge. A quick check with a square and I'm ready for glue up. I glued up the top in two halves, which made it a lot more manageable. I glued together two boards at a time and then glued together those two halves. I've used this method several times and while it takes a little bit longer to do, it eliminates the need for alignment joinery such as dowels, biscuits, or dominoes. And if you did a good job of milling everything square, you should have a perfectly flat panel glue up. Even after wiping off all the glue squeeze out, there's always a little bit of glue creep through moisture loss. So I'll wait 24 hours until all the moisture from the glue has evaporated, and then use a cabinet scraper to do a final cleanup of the glue line. Both ends of the tabletop are then squared up with the track saw. I needed these ends square because I use them as reference edges for templates that will shape the tabletop. All sides of the tabletop received what Garrett Hack has coined a subliminal curve and the edges will be treated to a nice parabolic edge. Once traced out, I rough cut the curves with a fine tooth jigsaw. I then used a large white side oval edge router bit and attached a one and a quarter inch roller bearing to follow the templates. 
The router bit was offset in height to give the edge a parabolic shape as opposed to an even round over. I then used the spoke shave and sandpaper to ease the sharp edges. On the bottom of the foot, I decided to use Tim Rousseau's method of making hardwood foot pads. I first made a router bushing guide jig for a 3 quarter inch bushing. The jig is made using plywood glued together with CA glue and brad nails. The foot of the leg assembly fits within the jig and clamped in my vise. The pocket for the foot is routed out and I squared up the corners with a chisel off camera. I made the foot pad from white oak by rounding over the corners with an eighth inch roundover bit, and then resawn on the bandsaw to thickness. I also cut the curved relief at the bottom of the foot to give it a lifted look. I cleaned up the white oak foot pad with a smoothing plane, and cleaned up the curved relief with a spoke shave and card scraper. Lastly, the pad is glued and clamped into the pocket. Much more elegant and durable than a felt foot pad. I made and installed wooden buttons that attached the base assembly to the tabletop of the trestle table. I used the Panta router to machine the elongated slots for the buttons. The wooden buttons were made on the crosscut sled of the table saw and are essentially a half lap. I then cut them to final length on the miter saw, counterboard them on the drill press, and shaped them on the disc sander. I then glued and installed threaded inserts before attaching the wooden buttons. This securely fastens the tabletop to the top brace while still allowing for about a quarter inch of seasonal wood movement in both directions. The mortise and tenons of the leg assemblies were drawboard, and to machine the walnut dowels I use Infinity Tools extra long dowel and pin cutters to cut the three inch long pins. The pins were then released from the walnut block at the bandsaw. After drilling the holes into the top brace and foot, I used a hole center punch to locate the holes on the tenons and set them back by a sixteenth of an inch so that the walnut pins will draw the shoulders of the tenons tight against the mortise shoulders. I then tapered the ends of the walnut dowels which helps drive them through the offset holes. Before I could assemble the leg assemblies, I rounded over all the exposed edges with a 3 8 inch roundover bit and then shaped all the sharp ends with my Rotex sander and a soft interface pad. I used liquid hide glue for its long open time and lubricating properties so as to not swell the snug fitting joints and pins. Once glued and clamped together, I drove in the dowels. After that, the clamps are no longer needed. I then cut the dowels flush and clean them up with a block plane. The walnut dowels are a repeated accent from the walnut plugs of the dining chairs. The last thing to do before applying finish is to attach the stretcher to the trestle table leg assemblies with wedged through tenons. The walnut wedges were made on the bandsaw using a jig. I then drilled half inch strain relief holes and cut saw curves into the tenons using my carcass saw. The strain relief holes ensures the tenon doesn't split past the hole once the wedges are driven in. Once the stretcher is installed, I hold everything together with a couple of clamps. I then drive in the wedges, cut them flush with a flush trim saw, and do some final shaping with a sanding block and my Rotex 90 with a soft interface pad. The table was sanded to 220 grit, thoroughly cleaned, and prepped for finish. I used a bright rub conversion varnish from Sherwin-Williams. I applied a thinned sealer coat and two full strength top coats using my HVLP sprayer. And that's it, a matching trestle table to go along with the dining chairs. If you'd like to see the chairs being built, you can find a link to that video here. Thanks for watching.